Your Majesty, I welcome you and Her Majesty the Queen Consort to Parliament today on this solemn occasion. Her late Majesty, our treasured Queen, and your beloved and deeply missed mother came here to Westminster Hall many times to receive the congratulations of her loyal subjects in the two Houses of Parliament and to celebrate with them historic landmarks and her long life of dedicated public service. She was both a leader to and a servant of her people. Her humility and integrity commanded the respect and captured the imagination of peoples and nations across the globe. Her late Majesty's joyous, unstinting and reassuring presence across the years made it difficult to contemplate that her long and inspiring reign of deep and unparalleled devotion would ever end. We, and the nation, closed our eyes to this inevitability. But it has ended. Only a few months after we celebrated Her Late Majesty's historic Platinum Jubilee. And as you said so movingly, Your Majesty, in your address to the nation, we all now feel a sense of loss beyond measure. Nevertheless, the qualities that Her Late Majesty embodied with such constancy remain to inspire you, Your Majesty, your family, and all your subjects. We remember her commitment, her kindness, her humour, her courage, and her fortitude, as well as the deep faith which was the anchor in her life. Your Majesty, this is a historic space. Its walls built more than 900 years ago by William Rufus and the magnificent hammer bean roof above us, commissioned, commissioned 300 years later by Richard II. Since medieval times, much of our national story has taken place within these very walls, from civic gatherings to coronation banquets to the centuries during which this hall was at the heart of our legal system. But this ancient hall is a living space and like our great nation, it continues to evolve. In 2012, Her Late Majesty came to Westminster Hall to mark her Diamond Jubilee. And we saw the unveiling of the splendid memorial window, commissioned by both members of Parliament's houses, which now graces the north wall of this historic space. And now, for 10 years, the light from that window has added beauty to the grey stones of this place, bathing them in colour and reminding hundreds, nay, thousands, millions of visitors to the Palace of Westminster of Her Late Majesty's dedicated life of service. Like the light that shines through this memorial window, her Late Majesty's magnificent achievements will live on by permanently illuminating and enriching our lives and our national discourse. Your Majesty, even as we mourn the loss of our dear Queen, we and future generations will draw strength from her shining example. Your Majesty, on behalf of all the members of the House of Lords, I pledge my loyalty to you and wish you and Her Majesty the Queen Consort well in the life of service to which you have dedicated yourself. We are proud and indeed humbled to welcome you as our King and we look forward to welcoming you on many more occasions to Parliament and to this Hall in the years ahead. Finally, Your Majesty, the House has commissioned me to deliver 
the following humble address, which their Lordships agreed on the 10th of September. I shall now read the address. Most gracious Sovereign, we, Your Majesty's most dutiful and loyal subjects, the Lord's spiritual and temporal in Parliament assembled, beg to leave to convey to Your Majesty the deep sympathy felt by this House in the grief Your Majesty has sustained by the death of our late beloved Queen, Your Majesty's mother of blessed and glorious memory. To extend to all the royal family the deep sympathy of this House in their grief, which is shared by all members. To assure Your Majesty that the example of selfless public service which her late Sovereign displayed over her reign of 70 years, her untiring endeavours for the welfare of her peoples and her fortitude in adversity will ever be held in reverent, affectionate and grateful remembrance. And to express to Your Majesty our loyalty to Your Majesty's royal person and our firm conviction that under the blessing of divine providence, your Majesty will, throughout your reign, further the happiness and protect the liberties of all your peoples in all your realms. Your Majesty, let me repeat a welcome to you and to Her Majesty, the Queen Consorts, on this solemn occasion. Members of both Houses of Parliament gather here to express our deep sympathy for the loss we have all sustained in the death of our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth. We have seen that this is a loss that has felt around the world. It is a loss to the United Kingdom, the overseas territories, the Crown dependencies, and many countries over which she reigned. It is a loss to the entire Commonwealth, which she did so much to nurture. It is a loss to all of us, but we know, most of all, it is a loss to you, Your Majesty, and to the Royal Family. Newspapers have been filled with photographs of Her Late Majesty since the news broke. The most touching have been the glimpses into the family life which we usually kept sheltered from public view. Deep as our grief is, we know yours is deeper. We offer our heartfelt sympathy to you and all the royal family. We know that there is nothing we can say in the praise of our late Queen, your mother, that you will not already know. Over the past days, members of the House have spoken of their encounters with Queen Elizabeth. They have spoken of her sense of duty, her wisdom, her kindness, her humour, how she touched the lives of hundreds of thousands of their constituents in her visits to every part of this country. Their words have been heartfelt. She sat in this historic hall, as you sit now on many occasions. Some of those occasions were to celebrate milestones in her own reign. The addresses to celebrate her silver, golden and diamond jubilees shared a common thread, that our constitutional monarchy is a symbol of stability in an ever-changing world. As Speaker Boothroyd said, Queen Elizabeth's wisdom and grace demonstrated for all to see the value of a constitutional monarchy in securing the liberties of our citizens and the fundamental unity of this kingdom and the Commonwealth. On other occasions, our late Queen was here to mark the historic moments, such as the 50th anniversary of the Second World War, a war in which she herself served in the armed forces. And in 1988, 
we celebrated the 300th anniversary of the revolutions of 1688 to 1689. It is perhaps very British to celebrate revolutions by presenting an address to Her Majesty. But those revolutions led to our constitutional freedoms, set out the foundation for a stable monarchy which protects liberty. In your first address to the nation, you recognised your life would change as a result of the new responsibilities. You pledge yourself to uphold constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. These are weighty responsibilities, as the early Queen Elizabeth said in her final speech to parliamentarians. To be a king and wear a crown is a thing more glorious to them that see it, that it is pleasant, that them that bear it. We know you hold the greatest respect, the precious traditions, the freedoms and responsibilities of our, our unique history and our system of parliamentary government. We know that you will bear those responsibilities which fall to you with the fortitude, dignity demonstrated by Her Late Majesty. When the House met at the Accession Council, my first symbolic act was to make the oath to be faithful and bear true allegiance to Your Majesty. King Charles. And so it is my duty to present our humble address to you, our new King, to express both our sorrow and loss of our Sovereign Lady and our confidence in the future in your reign. Most gracious Sovereign, we, Your Majesty's dutiful, loyal subjects, the Commons of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, in Parliament assembled, express deep sympathy, felt by this House for the great sorrow which Your Majesty has sustained by the death of the late Queen, Your Majesty's mother. Extended to all the Royal Family the deep sympathy of this House in their grief, which is shared by all its members. Assure Your Majesty that Her Late Majesty's unstinting dedication over a reign of over 70 years to the service of our great country and its people, and to the service of the countries and the peoples of the rest of the wider Commonwealth, which will always be held affectionate and grateful remembrance. And to express to Your Majesty our loyalty to you and our conviction that you will strive to uphold the liberties and to promote the happiness of the people in all your realms now and in years to come. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, I am deeply grateful for the addresses of condolence by the House of Lords and the House of Commons, which so touchingly encompass what our late Sovereign, my beloved Mother, the Queen, meant to us all. As Shakespeare says of the earlier Queen Elizabeth, she was a pattern to all princes living. As I stand before you today, I cannot help but feel the weight of history which surrounds us and which reminds us of the vital parliamentary traditions to which members of both houses dedicate yourselves with such personal commitment for the betterment of us all. Parliament is the living and breathing instrument of our democracy. That your traditions are ancient, we see in the construction of this great hall, and the reminders of medieval predecessors 
of the office to which I have been called. And the tangible connections to my darling late mother we see all around us, from the fountain in New Palace Yard, which commemorates the late Queen's Silver Jubilee, to the sundial in Old Palace Yard for the Golden Jubilee, the magnificent stained glass window before me for the Diamond Jubilee, and so poignantly and yet to be formally unveiled, your most generous gift to Her Late Majesty to mark the unprecedented Platinum Jubilee, which we celebrated only three months ago with such joyful hearts. The great bell of Big Ben, one of the most powerful symbols of our nation throughout the world and housed within the Elizabeth Tower, also named for my mother's Diamond Jubilee, will mark the passage of the late Queen's progress from Buckingham Palace to this Parliament on, on Wednesday. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, we gather today in remembrance of the remarkable span of the Queen's dedicated service to her nations and peoples. While very young, Her Late Majesty pledged herself to serve her country and her people and to maintain the precious principles of constitutional government which lie at the heart of our nation. This vow she kept with unsurpassed devotion. She set an example of selfless duty which, with God's help and your counsels, I am resolved faithfully to follow. King's bodyguard. King's bodyguard. Shut up.